a video game to fight crime in real life. The CBS News Texas I team is really digging into how that's possible. Our Ginger Allen is getting an inside look at how One North Texas University is turning that video game into a way to fight sex trafficking. Sounds Tell crazy. Us more. Yeah, it does. Tell us more about this. So this really is a call to all gamers. SMU has received more than $1 million grant to create just one big sex trafficking data warehouse. In short, they're using law enforcement databases, artificial intelligence, and then video gameplay, which is where you come in, all to create this. Deep in this mainframe, entangled in wires, lights, and digits, under temperature and sanitation controls floor to ceiling, is a high-powered web of servers securing a sex trafficking data warehouse. And we got a sneak peek. When you hear the word data warehouse, you think you're going to walk into a big room with files everywhere. That's a little old school, but that's not at all what this is. It's not. And so Economist and project lead Elizabeth Wheaton Paramo says SMU is using a nearly $1.2 million federal grant to help transform this digital world into the future of fighting sex trafficking. Many data sets have been developed. Um, the problem with that is that they're siloed in, by individuals, by agencies, by organizations, and there's really no way to look across those data sets to come up with answers. But now, there will be. The data warehouse will combine and centralize those existing law enforcement and court databases. The goal is to give investigators a one-stop shop to search for victims, traffickers, and emerging crime spots. And what's so intriguing is you can help make that happen by playing a game. Meet Dr. Stephanie Bongiorno. And I knew that we wanted to improve machine learning using gameplay. And Dark Shadows. This is the video. This is, these are the official reports and detective notes that we In the video at. game she designed, you're an investigator solving a crime, extracting and organizing clues. Your goal here is to get a full picture of who Walter is. But in reality, you are digging through actual Department of Justice press releases, which researchers have inputted into the game, scrambling the details for privacy. From those cases, you are sorting out real-life traffickers' names and crime locations. Then I can also bring my own intuitive understanding to the data in a way that AI may not naturally um, arrive at so it says that Walter worked at a hotel downtown locals allegedly saw him enjoying cocktails and gambling so I might be able to infer that one of Walter's hobbies is going to the bar and I can add that and annotate Walter as a character so while the game players are earning coins you're earning data correct to be used in a very serious setting absolutely Project lead Corey Clark says gamers will help investigators by doing this tedious job that for now takes them way too long. Right now, you have investigators and they're manually searching the internet, looking at these releases, trying to pull information out, putting in their own database systems, their own reports. There's no unified place to get it. And then once it's all together, you can start using it for machine learning, find hidden correlations and things like that. And that's where visualization expert Matteo Langston Smith comes in. If this were a database or a building, you are the architect. Yes, exactly. Smith so, is layering the data from the game as well as from the law enforcement databases and then building dashboards that look like this. Policymakers and police officers will use these to link cases. We have Fluffy Reynolds, and um, he's an attorney. Um, or a prosecutor who is connected to Sarah Johnson and Jessica Thompson. So a law enforcement officer can go to Fluffy Reynolds and investigate that connection. And then it also breaks it down to regions, which is what we see here. Graphs will help identify possible hotspots. We saw Longview, McAllen, Dallas, Fort Worth. We can see here there's actually an, an increasing trend um, in Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington area. As sex trafficking grows locally and globally. Investigations can be uh, increased. These researchers say this crime fighting tool being generated here at SMU under tight security, which we experienced, should only be accessible to those with access and should be powerful enough to slow down this crime around the world. Everybody can actually have a better understanding of what's going on, what's being done, and how to stop it.
So again, this project was funded by a federal earmark grant one year ago, and it's not renewable. But this is all still moving forward. SMU is now looking for other government and private funding, and we've put information for anyone interested in that on our website. The warehouse is available to police and policymakers right now, but the idea of all of this is just to keep it growing with more and more information as that becomes available. And we know that you've been following the issue of sex trafficking for years now. This is a really creative way to help real-time situations. Right now, it's just limited, this warehouse, to police and policymakers. When can the public, or can the public, play the game? Yes, that, that's an important point, uh, Nicole. So the information from the game is not available yet. That's because you do not have access to this testing phase for feedback yet. But you will by the end of the year, and then you will have full access for free wherever you get your games by next year. And you will start seeing that information being added, and you will be helping fight sex trafficking. And I think at the top of this, we said, you know, video game. Like, that mm -hmm. concept probably blows a lot of people's minds. Why video game? Why did SMU say this is the mechanism we should use for this? It's not the first time they've done it. Mm. Can you believe that? They have actually used this very same type of research to help with data-driven research before mm. and also to train AI, so artificial intelligence. So they've talked about games for medical developments. Mm. They specifically talked to us about using it in um, eye disease and retina problems and then also in creating new cancer-fighting drugs. How amazing is that? Technology can do some good. It, it really can. can. Ginger Allen with the iTeam, we appreciate you. Thanks.